All right. So, 2014 is coming to a close. Sad and so and sad. Yeah. What a year for movies. I and guess. Things. Yeah, I know. Things I, happen. I would say yeah. It's good. It was, it was a good year. It was a good year. Um, so we're going to talk about some movies that we haven't had the chance to talk about in previous episodes, and then at the end. We're going to talk about the future. The future. The future. Yeah, what is that? Oh, that's in the Amazing Spider-Man 2 trailer when they're like, what's this? And he's like, the future. <laughs> and you, <laughs> just see, you, just see, you just see eels in the tank like, the future. <laughs> eels, electric eels are the future of science. Yeah. Of course. All right. So, All right. 2014, Ooh. one of my favorite movies, the Lego movie. Like it was like so good. Yeah, I think we can all agree that it was a great film. Yeah, Paul Giamatti, Paul Giamatti steal the proof. <laughs> yeah, obviously, of yeah. course. That goes without saying. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it was, it was just really well done. Like, I and I, I was a big fan of Legos as a kid, and when they came out, I'm like, my my mental mindset was like, oh, they're making a Lego movie. Like, it's like those Lego video games. It, you know, like they're just cash yeah. out on the brand. But right. it was it was amazing. Like, I kind of also. I mean, Lego's a bigger name than, uh, you know, certain board games, but I thought it was going to be, like, Battleship, where it's, like, what's the, what's even the point of picking the name? But then, like, you see, it really is, like, the Lego movie. And what's cool about it, like, about kids who played with Legos, who are, like, now, you know, in their 20s, like us, is that everything about Legos in that movie is kind of, like, I do you know what I mean? It's everything is like uh, yeah, like the craggle. It's like they're all like references to like Lego kids, culture. To like almost. Lego culture, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you for it's total. It totally is. Using it's like words that I couldn't. It's like a love letter to Lego made by Lego. It's kind of yeah. weird when you think of it that way, but like it really like was not a cash in. I mean, they made a lot of money. Of course, yeah. so I, they deserved it. Deserved it. Yeah. Well deserved. <laughs> they, earned, they earned their money. They earned, they earned that. money. Yeah. And the movie is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. I just I've never seen an animated movie that looked like that. You know? Yeah. Like it looks all great. the characters looked like Legos. They all moved like Legos. There's so much stuff that looked like yeah. it was like handmade stop motion, but it it, it wasn't. wasn't. It was. But, like, they put, but, you know, it still goes to show they put in the effort to, like, make sure everything looked like Legos. Yeah, yeah. it was really impressive. They, I, like, there are some things they could have just not, like, water or They could have easily made it, like, 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 oh, like you were saying, Lego video games. All those games are essentially the same thing. And they have the cutscenes where they, you know, remake famous movie scenes. Like, they could have just done that. Yeah. That would have, that could have been the Lego movie. But they didn't. And, it really, and that, it really stood out, and that's why I was kind of scared because, like, I knew I knew from like the trailer and stuff that there were all these different characters, like Batman's in it, and you know, Gandalf's in it, and like all these. And all Dumbledore, these, yeah, <coughs> Dumbledore. Um, and I thought, like, oh, they're just gonna like mash together and like make reference, like bad references to, to like other stuff. Uh, what was that? There's some movie I was watching the other day, and like all the comedy was just like, oh, the Rugrats movie. That was it. Like it was just. All the jokes in that thing are like references that are like misquoted by babies because they don't know what the references are. Yeah, they don't know how to speak properly. So all the, every joke in you, I, in you the watched movie. the Rugrats movie the other day. Uh, or uh, Matt Matt Viola had it on or someone. Ah, uh, and I just like came upstairs. <laughs> don't say that name. It's gonna curse the video. Oh no, <laughs> it's breaking. Um, but uh, for those of you who don't know, Matt Viola has a curse. Or he also has a television show, and every time he tries to film, things just explode. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, like it, it could have just been like references and like doing sort of satirical mock, uh, yeah. you know, references to other movies and genres or whatever. And but they didn't. They made a, a very unique story. A unique story. Yeah. Charming. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Charming is the word I think. Yeah, absolutely. Had, like, definitely my, had my a parents, message. My parents really liked the Lego movie, and like, not that they they're old people. <laughs> they, not that they have like bad taste or anything, but it's like if you can make a movie for kids and then the adults love it too, just as much. Like my mom quotes it, you know, yeah. like that you made something. My really niece successful. and nephew both love it, so there's the opposite. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. No, uh, I, so a, tr- a true, uh, yeah, a true movie where it's like, you know, for a general audience, everyone will enjoy it. Yeah. It's not like a kids' movie where like the parents sort of, because usually with a kids' movie it's like 
it's a kids movie. Yeah. And then you throw in some references and stuff for the parents so that they're slightly entertained. Yeah. And like it goes over the kids' heads. So Absolutely. Like, There's yeah. so much stuff. Like <laughs> Disney movies do that a lot. Like the yeah. the whole idea of the the Octan Corporation. It's like the, when um Emmett is like rolling through all the things that they own. He's like, oh, they own the voting machines, and I'm like. Oh wait! <laughs> yeah, like, it's nice. horrible. Yeah, they live in like this oppressive society, yeah. and it's just like so beautiful and wonderful. Exactly, everything is awesome. Exactly, exactly. It's, it's it's if that isn't a sign of like the movie, yeah. like thematically and it actually being awesome, it, it's super yeah. self aware because like like I, uh, that song for example, it's like it's it's making it's directly making fun of like catchy pop music. But also being catchy. While music. also being super catchy. Yeah. Oh, and it's, it's, it's brilliant. Like, it's like most... actually a great song. Yeah, though. it's amazing. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, and that's what that's what's so clever. It's like they're you know, for for a kids movie, you know, it's an animated film. Yeah. Like you know, it, it's very clever. Yeah. All all the parts Absolutely. of the story and all the you know. And you know, I think uh, a lot of people got behind this movie. Like, just look at the the cast. Yeah, all the voice acting. All, yeah. So many people. Yeah. In the movie. More, uh, Morgan Freeman, Chris Pratt, uh, Liam Mason, Mason yeah. Will Ferrell. Banks, Will Fa- obviously Will Ferrell. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Even uh, you know the I, I don't know if you want to call it a twist. Oh, where Will Ferrell actually Will shows Ferrell up. Spoilers! <laughs> Spoilers for the Lego movie. movie. Should have seen the Lego <laughs> movie. I don't know. Yeah, um, I never know. We'll but I remember the first time I saw the movie, I watched it with my niece and nephew. And the part was, like, about to happen where it went to, like, real life. Yeah. And, like, right before it happens, my nephew goes, this part's weird. And, and then I just remember, like, this this is where the movie turns from, like, kids really like this movie to, like, I, mean, I thought, like, that was the most amazing part of the movie. And my nephew's like, this part's weird. <laughs> And yeah. I was like, oh my god. Like, it, it broke the fourth wall for him. And like, yeah. he just, you know, and it's, it's, like, it's just, like, this is too real. This yeah. is too real. Like, he embraced the universe. Like, he just accepted it. And then yeah. and then you're like, oh, no, this isn't real. You know? Yeah. It's like, it's like the ending of Blazing Saddles, where, like, all the walls are falling down. <laughs> yeah. and it's spilling and over. I, it was kind yeah, of actually, also amazing. it really reminded me of the SpongeBob movie, too. Yeah, when yeah, they, yeah. they go on land. Yeah. And Alexander Clam Bell. <laughs> Yeah, it's exact. I'd say that's probably the closest comparison. Is is that the what SpongeBob was, movie? What was the name of, like? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Were they entering David like? Yeah. No, the Shell City. Shell City. Yeah, Shell yeah. City. It, 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 you know, it breaks the. It's like that's the real world, and it's like it, it goes from animation to like mm-hmm. live action, and and I, I love that, and I I could yeah. see kids being a bit like like what's happening, like because it's, again, it's going over their head a bit, like. The idea that, like, you know, right, it, it talks about the greater, like, 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 like I said, Lego culture, right? But that's what that. I think is amazing as well. I was like, I know it looks like kids stuff, but the way <laughs> I'm using it is in an adult way. <laughs> and he's like, but Dad, we bought it at the toy store. <laughs> Uh, I, could, I could go and quote it in that movie for <laughs> But I, I, I think, yeah, Paul J. Mighty Seal approval. Yeah. Everyone loves it. Um, go see it. One more haven't. note. Uh, they, they do plan on making a sequel. Of course. Yes. Do I we think that's that a great idea? They're making a few sequels. They're making Lego Batman with, the, with Will Arnett's character, and they're right. trying to get all the Batmans from yeah. movies past into that one movie, which is oh, kind okay. of ambitious. Yeah. And then, uh, pretty cool, right? then they're doing Lego Movie 2, which is, like, the writers are the same. The writers from the first movie uh-huh. are the same. But it's going to be a different director, which is, like, okay. Okay, we'll see. Yeah. 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 I really like the last line in the Lego Movie when Will Ferrell's like, <laughs> now that I'm letting you play here, I'm going to have to let your sister. And then the Duplos comes down, and the <laughs> Duplos and, like, the most, like, innocent child-like voices, like, we come from the planet Duplos, and we're here to destroy you. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> it's so <laughs> crazy. Oh, it's a tree pitch of it. And the movie ends. It's incredible. It's, it's, it's a lead into the dystopian future of the <laughs> yeah, second of the, movie. Du- yeah. Duplo overlords. Yeah. Duplo overlords. No, that would be amazing. That's but, hilarious. Yeah, writers, take that down. But, but uh, <laughs> I know you're watching. Uh, just another note off of that. The directors of the Lego movie did the Jump Street movies. Really? Wow. So yeah. for me, 
Like this year was like totally their year with Lego Movie and Twenty Two Jump, Jump Street. Street. What did you What did you think another. of that movie just briefly? Twenty Two Jump Street. Yeah. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, you liked it. Okay, yeah. I saw I saw it. Yeah, and like to me, it's like it's the sequel to the first one. Like that's all. Right. It is. Exactly. They're, yeah. They're very self aware. But of they kind of yeah they play exactly off of the, the self awareness. And and like uh, probably the funniest part is like the ending where they have all all the references oh to that God. next movie. It was just. Ridiculous. Non-stop. Ridiculous. Like it's three or four minutes more movies. Yeah. So yeah. does that mean they're not doing anything? I think they are doing the 22 Jump Street. Oh, really? Okay. I have no idea. I, I think they are. Though. Okay. Because I, I wasn't sure if... That like, ending would make it seem like they're not. But. Yeah, exactly. That like It implies that like like we're making fun of, of like how many movies are made and like... They, they purposely make the third one bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So but How yeah. like... I don't know how like existential would that be if they like made a third one and purposely mm-hmm. made it really shitty and like they're totally aware of it. I don't know. That'd or be... like they just gave it a budget of like $10. two million dollars yeah. just so that like you know they don't really <coughs> lose much on it. And they're just yeah. like, ah, like I don't know. It'd be really yeah, funny. just really. I'd still cheap. go see it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They could still make a shit ton of money. Yeah. Yeah. There okay. you go. All right, what was what was the next thing we wanted to talk about? I we wanted to talk about Planet. I want to talk about Planet of the Apes because I just want to say I'm a huge Planet of the Apes fan. I think both of you know. I've uh, about yes, it. I'm aware. And answer Doctor Zayas clip. Yeah. Oh yeah. Perfect place. And the uh, uh, break dancing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> huge huge fan. Um, and you know. Okay, so ignoring ignoring the original five movies, which sort of get right. worse as they go along, but I've seen I've seen oh. everything. Yeah. Um, Tim Burton, Spoilers. Tim Burton remake was interesting, but kind of shitty at the same time. Like, I think I think they wanted to do a whole new series, like, probably, like, and it just didn't take off because yeah. the movie didn't do well. I want to say one thing about the Tim Burton one. When I was a kid, uh, it was like me and my brother Stephen were staying were staying with my uh, <laughs> uncle Merrill and auntie in New Jersey, like, one night, and it was, like, my parents wanted to kind of be there, so, you know, my aunt and uncle were like, we're going to do something fun with you yeah. kids, what do you want to do? And I was like, I want to see the new Planet of the Apes movie. And uh, we saw the movie, it was terrible. And uh, so I just want to apologize to my Uncle Merrill and Aunt T. That made you watch that it. Movie. <laughs> so sorry. Did, was, was, like, whatever, eight-year-old Chris aware that it was really shitty? I, like, was aware that it was, like... Not enjoyable. It was weird. Like, I remember, like, I remember my thought process was, like, this is kind of weird. Did you see, have you, did you see the original movie before you saw that? Or did you there, just... I went through a did phase... Did you just see there was a monkey movie? No, I went it. through a phase as a kid where I, like, was really into all the original movies. In fact, the, another story of Chris Griff's past is that when I went through the phase where I was really into the movies... I, like, saw, like, the first two or something like that, and I wanted to, like, go to... You remember Blockbuster Kids? I wanted, to go to, <laughs> I wanted to go to Blockbuster and, like, get them all and, like, watch them. And then I did something bad, and I got in trouble, and my mom was like, we're not renting you those movies. And I was like, ah! And then, like, that day on uh, whatever movie channel... They was they were running a marathon. <laughs> and I watched it, and I remember my mom coming into the room and being like, Son of a bitch! <laughs> like, just like so, like mad. the the greatest loophole in history. Yeah. It's on TV, like I, like I, I, we didn't read it. Like, I have no power over this. But I'm okay, sorry so for that big no, second. Oh, uh, that's that's fine. So yeah, that sort of flopped for them, and then they 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 dropped it for a while, and then they decided to re they rebooted it again. They said, so, okay, <laughs> we're gonna do this origin story similar to. Four and five. So the the two movies that they made, and I always forget which is which. The Dawn and Rise. Yeah. They the the newest Rise one, is the first. They, Rise is with James Franco. Okay. This one okay. did not. And it's yeah. So Rise Dawn. Rise is basically a re, is a remake of the fourth Planet of the Apes movie, uh-huh. which is um, what is it, Conquest. Conquest. And then and then um, and then the, the most recent one, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, was a remake of the really really shitty uh, Battle of the Planet of the Apes, which is the fifth movie. That, the fifth movie is pretty awful. I this think, movie is pretty bad. I really like Conquest. Yeah, like, Conquest, I really like Conquest, Up to Conquest. I, in some ways, I think Conquest is better even than the sequel, even than Planet of Apes 2, in, in certain respects. Oh, it's The City Beneath? Yeah. Planet, beneath yeah, that beneath one's it. also pretty weird. Yeah, that, it's weird. Like, some parts of it I really like, but then other parts just, like, go off the rails. Uh-huh. So, a lot of... Uh, so, the fourth movie is definitely either the second or, or, or third best Planet of Apes movie. And so, um, 
when when they remade the James Franco one, Rise of yeah. the Flames, I was it was like enjoyable. I thought it was gonna yeah. be terrible. So when I saw it, it no, was, definitely I, better than I thought. I, I was very pleasantly surprised. But again, it wasn't like the greatest movie I'd ever seen. Yeah, but it was enjoyable. So when I went back to see. Um, there was Dawn. proof that Draco Malfoy will be forever typecast as a douchebag. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Poor Tom Felton. Like even yeah. call him Draco Malfoy just yeah. proves that. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't know his name. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. thanks for that. Um, and then uh, the, I, I went to see this movie while I was in New York during my internship. I went by myself. I was just like, okay, i got to see the new one because I was pretty happy with the other one. Yeah. And boy, did it blow my mind. Like, it was so good. Yeah. Like, Way like uh, you know a grade above um, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Absolutely, Rise of the Planet of the Apes was a movie that like when it first was like announced and trailers were coming out, I was like, I don't understand the point of this. The whole point of Planet of the Apes is it's a twist at the end, and you don't know that it's Earth. Like, why would they tell this? Yeah, why story? bother explaining? Yeah, I don't like. Is, are they dumbing it down? And then like came out whatever DVDs. My mom brought it home. I'm like. Yeah, watch your shit. I watched Mom. it, and it was like so your it was mom like, brought you. It was like Planet of the Apes DVD. <laughs> it was like that's a movie I would watch on TV or on DVD, and I would yeah. be like, okay, I watched this movie, sure. and it happened, and I don't really need to see it again. But it was enjoyable during the two hours. Yeah. But then this one just like blew me away how much better it was. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'll definitely watch this again. Like it's. It's so. I, I'm I, I'm very much looking forward to watching it a second time. Yeah. Um, like sort of knowing how everything turns out. Like yeah. I want to watch it again and sort of pick up on other stuff. But yeah, it's it's very, very clever. And we we talked a bit about it because, um, yeah. you know, there it's it has a big sort of cast of up characters, yeah. and it's pretty split between ape characters and human characters. Yeah. The two and there are good factions. apes and bad apes. There's bad humans, there's bad apes. So, like, it's very gray. The whole movie's gray, which I like. I like yeah. that. It's not like the apes are bad, the humans are good, or the humans are bad, and the apes right. are good. Which, the first movie was sort of like, you know, oh, the apes are trying to get their freedom or whatever. I don't know. Like, Yeah, it was like an understandable, yeah. like, what they were doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, this movie, it's like, I sympathize for the humans and their situation, their plight. I sympathize with the apes and their plight. Right. So it's like, when they're coming into conflict, it's sort of tragic. And you feel that tragedy where it's like, you know, they're going into conflict when they, they're trying to, they both want to live in peace, but the conflict is sort of inevitable. And they have yeah. forces on both sides pushing them towards, towards right. war. Right. And it's, it's just really great. Like, yeah, and every, every, like, action in the movie is justified by an action earlier on and has consequences yeah. later on in the movie. And I, everything I, builds, I just, nothing is done for nothing, you know. Yeah, it, it. It was a very tight story, you know. It, it really just worked very well. Uh, yeah, and then the whole like uh, ape, you know, motion capture. Oh, and circus. They were fantastic. You know, craziness. I heard. Um, I you both know I did not yeah. see the film. I really wanted. Yeah, to. I I, I strongly recommend it. I was all <laughs> Giamatti seal of approval <laughs> ten times. Yeah. Uh, like Dan said, like I saw the first one. You know, I liked it. Yeah. But you know, it it's it's a DVD movie. Yeah, it's fine. So when the second one came out, like, I didn't, you know, rush to go see it. Mm -hmm. And then, like, after it came out, all this buzz happened that this movie was super dope. Yeah. And, uh, That's what made me go movie. see it, because I wasn't going to run out and see it, but then I heard good things. Yeah. I'm like, I should give yeah. it a try. Like, let's go see it. But um, just a point that I thought about from the first one is that my, my favorite part of Rise of the Planet of the Apes is, um, I mean, minus Tom Felton saying, get your paws off me, you damn dirty ape, because it's kind of weird. But he says that, and then Caesar goes, no, and it's like the first time he talks. So I remember that, even in the theaters, I thought, okay, that part's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And, I, like, is there anything like that in the sequel that has the same impact? Because like, you already know he talks. Well, the, the talking is actually very minimal, and I think they did, they yeah, did that on purpose. Any time, which I, yeah, that any time good. Yeah. the apes speak, it is something... Not, I'm not gonna say profound, but it's noteworthy to like. It is, yeah, yeah important to the story because most of the time when they communicate with each other, they communicate in like grunts and like sign language. And they're, sign still language. Doing, yeah, they're still doing sign language for the most part. Yeah. yeah. So and when they do, they're reading subtitles. Yeah. There were subtitles. Yeah. <laughs> I watched the whole thing without subtitles. Really? Yeah. Wow, you missed right, like half the so movie. I, guess... I still thought it was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, that's amazing. Well, now I have to rewatch the movie. I, I, I really want to watch it without subtitles now to see what it's, it's fantastic. like. fantastic. Imagine it's like you just start this whole thing. Like, yeah. oh my god, watch uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes without subtitles. It's way better. Yeah. <laughs> it's just it just so made as much better. sense to me. When they, when they spoke, that was when you heard, you know, the They're story. Pretty, yeah. No, but they to me. No, they do sign language. You got yeah. yeah rewatch it with subtitles. I have to now. So I feel like funny. an idiot, but yeah. I don't know what I should do now. Yeah, <laughs> just have to, the, yeah, yeah. Just have the, both screens going. <laughs> I don't see the stuff. Oh yeah. Any sense. Well, watch, watch it. Watch. Oh, yeah, I didn't think about it too far. <laughs> um, I just. I, I just, it reminds me of, like a thing where like these people were watching two movies at the same time on, on different screens. Never mind. Anyway. <laughs> Um, I can't believe there were subtitles. Yeah, that's so yeah. funny. The community, like, that's it, amazing. They had subtitles in the first movie too, and they're doing the sign language because they very ass- brief. They, it's only like one. Scene. Yeah, but they they assume you don't know sign language, so they're putting subtitles yeah. so you understand what the apes are saying to each other. Because well, yeah. apes don't speak the same sign language. Oh wait, I guess Caesar would. Yeah, he Caesar learned. because oh, he's Franco. talking to the other monkey, and he learned knows. it from James Franco. So right, he learned it from James Franco, and he, and he taught the other one. So they, yeah, they, okay, no, like, you're right. I was thinking like, oh, monkey sign language. That's like really different. Where it's like no, they speak when they smile, and they do like or whatever. No. Sign language. No, yeah, they 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 teach it to each other. Right, right. They have they have like a primitive ape society. Yeah, going Caesar on. teaches. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, definitely watch it. Strongly I recommend it. Um, but who? Um, I mean, I know Andy Serkis. Yeah, but it's uh, Jason Gar- Clark. Gary Oldman, Gary Oldman, Jason Clark. Jason Clark is uh, he was a guy in Zero Dark Thirty. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, so he can. I mean, no offense, man, but I did not like him in Zero Dark Thirty, and I don't think I've seen him in much else. But I really didn't like him in that movie, and I remember like he was more of a profound character than I thought he would be. And I was like, who the hell is this guy? And then when I saw the first trailer for Don. And I saw, like, I think in the trailer, he's like, I need to speak to Cedar! That is not in the movie. Oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> but. Yeah, I don't remember. But anyways, it's like, not in the movie. I was like, ah, oh, this guy, like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, is he good in that movie? Because I, yeah, like, he, never he's seen a, yeah. he's like, I liked him in. He's like the Caesar on the Parallel, human Parallel, yeah. Yeah. He's okay. like the main protagonist on the human yeah, side. Yeah. 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 Like, and, Caesar uh, dominates the movie for a large part of it. Well, that's good. He should. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, like, on the human side, like, he's the relatable yeah. mm-hmm. sort of, you know, good guy, I guess. Although, I am super happy about Don. Andy Serkis is the first name. He's the, the yeah. lead. Yeah, good. Which yeah. is fantastic. I, he needs, uh, like, uh, I, well... There's a YouTube series. Well, people know who he is. I think he's getting a certain degree. I think this shit. has helped him so yeah. much. Yeah, and he's, we know that he's in the new Star Wars. Yeah. You know, and, you know, it's like he should be recognized. It's, it's sort of tragic because what he does often doesn't reveal himself at, you know, right. the magic and he, of the Yeah, he's done movies oh, where it's him. Avengers, too. Yeah. yeah. What? He's like a, he was like a supervisor thing. I don't know if he's in it. No, he's in the new Avengers. Or the, not the first one. He's in the new one. Yeah. Yeah. Like so, a, just like. Stuff. No, he's a car- He's a guy ca- in the trailer. Like they show a guy who's got like weird hair for like half a second, and it's him. That is it. No, oh, I didn't know that. I gotta rewatch it. All right. We did this weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember you mentioning that. So. Oh, I don't know. If I, I don't know if it I came up. Yeah, but anyway, We're gonna I know he's like helping on the movie, and I know he's doing stuff in Star Wars, and like yeah, that. It's like you're in like all the biggest franchises right yeah. now. Yeah. Well, because he's like the only guy who does what he does. He or he's the best at it, for sure. Yeah. Or yeah. the most recognized, at least. Right. Yeah. Well, There's, like I mean, it, it's becoming more common. Like you know, The Hobbit is using motion capture for mm-hmm. like their CGI stuff, and like you know, it's it's a good way to to sort of bring uh, yeah. a more human touch to it. Right. Right. Um, right. And it just a uh, just like a general recognition of this, you know, art. Form. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's a new frontier. Because yeah. it is performance capture, you can do 100 takes and they can match the, the best voice, the best motion. Right. Or even fix you in post. And, like, I think that is sort of what is artificial about it. Mm-hmm. But the fact that they did, they actually do all these actions and the, the facial expressions and the voices. Yeah. You know, you, you did it, you performed it at some point, just someone else helped perfect. Yeah. Picked yeah. all the perfect parts and put that there. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a more extreme version of like you know what the editor does. The editor's gonna go through yeah. and he's gonna you know he's gonna touch pick up things best. and he's gonna sure. he's gonna pick the best shots and the best audio and the, 
that, <laughs> that, that's how movies are made, you know. And yeah. it, it's just it's just a more extreme version of that where you have even more yeah. effects being put absolutely. On. But uh, I you know I just just recommend it. You know, I don't want to talk too much too much longer about it. But yeah. I was very good movie with or without. Yeah, definitely go see with it. Or with it. Yeah, I will see it. Yeah, let me let me know if you watch it. I didn't, I'm so, I, I don't even, know what to do now. I don't even know if that's an option to like turn off the subtitles. I, I don't know. Like you were yeah, set on yeah, yeah. So, uh, one one other thing I like to say about Andy Serkis is that um, he's kind of like he's kind of taking the role of what back in the day Kevin Peter Hall was. If you don't know, Kevin Peter Hall was like the biggest. Um, monster guy in yeah. movies like he was the predator he was harry and harry and the hendersons which is like a <laughs> like a nice. nicer role uh, but i've seen because predator is my favorite movie ever I love predator. Yes. and so i've seen a lot of inf- interviews where people said that like you know if there were other people who were just like oh i'll wear the monster thing and i'll just go like this and they back in the day people said that kevin peter hall was like he was the only person who was like a super duper actor to like go into who's yeah. willing to just not phone it in right basically yeah who well, would just he like, specializes in being a monster in right? being a monster and bringing like, it to life if yeah. you see Harry and the Hendersons like his facial expressions you know and even in Predator like just certain things that he did just his movements and brought yeah. everything way more to life and I think Andy Serkis is kind of like a successor to that but in a very different realm yeah I think you'd get even more recognition for that sort of thing yes because he, he's, he's not just doing the movements, he's doing, like you said, the facial expressions right. and the voice or whatever, you know, whatever yeah, he's yeah. doing to it, you know. There's a YouTube series I watch called Cinema Sins, which just, like, takes popular movies and it's like, everything wrong with this movie in blank minutes or whatever. Nit- nitpicking. Yeah. Right, nitpicking. And it's humorous, but yeah. uh, every movie that has Andy Serkis in it, they go, Andy Serkis wasn't nominated for an Oscar for this role. <laughs> it's like, bing! And I... Uh, I don't that's, know, I just think that's another thing funny. I want to talk about. So, pretty recently, all the studios put out their for your consideration uh, websites. Yeah. So on Fox's page, they have Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, of course, which yeah. is great because it's a movie they made this year, and so they should send it out for consideration. Because why, why not? What can you lose? Yeah. Um, so, under that. Uh, you know, under there, like, for your consideration, there's, like, best picture, director, you know, the, all the mm-hmm. all the typical things. But there is no lead actor in that movie, according to them. Which is disheartening, but it puts Andy Serkis at a better playing field, sort of. He's competing with the supporting actor. Do you think, do you think that's an intentional thing, where it's like, we, <laughs> we legitimately believe that... It is sort of an ensemble movie where there's a lot it, of different It definitely is an ensemble. Like, where it's like, we think we, we don't think he, he's lead enough to be considered a lead actor, or do they think, are they trying to pedge it where, like, we want Andy him to be... Andy Serkis playing a monkey can't be a lead. Yeah, yeah. Or, well, it could are be... Are they trying to get him into a better category where he's more likely to win? Is that is that the, is it strategic? It, it could be strategic, but it's like, you know, Jason Clark, Gary Oldman, the guy who plays the evil monkey, I think his name is Tony, Toby Kebble? Something like that. Yeah. But he was also very good in it. Yeah. Um, they're all supporting actors in the film. So I just thought it was an interesting choice. It, it, I think it does put him at a better advantage to be considered for these things. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not, I'm, after watching the movie, I'm not sure if he is the lead. Because if you're going to base it on screen time, it's like between him and Jason Clark's character. Yeah. Like the movie deals with, a lot of it deals with Caesar and... and you know the impact of his decisions right. and everything, right. but like how much time he, you know, he's not like always on screen, right? You know, right. and it's not like he is personally driving all the action that's right. happening. A lot of it is out of his control as well. Right, season so. in this movie, I, I read something about this where they, they approach Dawn as a, this is like their godfather. Yeah. So like Caesar would be the Don Corleone Don, yeah, okay. character of the movie. Where he's not in it for the entire time, but but his influence is every his everywhere. influence is felt throughout the movie, and he's a very powerful and respected character within within the universe. And then, uh, you know, his, his everything that happens affects him in some way. I would love to picture like the monkey sees it, like petting a cat and being like, <laughs> "I'll make you an I, I like <laughs> I. 
Brando guarantee you, him. look at Caesar's face and then go back and like watch Brando. Watch Brando. It, it's definitely Brando inspired. No, I, exactly. That face is no. the face. That's the face he makes through the whole I movie. I know. It's kind of funny de- when I think about be, it now. It has to be Brando inspired. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's very possible. <laughs> you know, I, I can't imagine. Now, I won't. I won't be able to see Don and Ian's now because I'm just gonna laugh. Like it's. Well, gonna no, and then, like that goes back to Godfather. Whenever he spoke, it was always something. Yeah. Profound. Sure, yeah. 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 Yeah, it was something he always had something important to say. Right, yeah. right, exactly. Uh, okay, uh, let's move on because we've been talking about this yeah. for a while. Um, so, what was, the, what was the last one we wanted to talk about? Uh, well, I guess going off is Jason Clark and so on. Um, yeah. He has been cast as this is kind of a future. Well, yeah. wasn't there one more time we wanted to talk about? No, I think that was it. Oh, is that no. it? Okay. Okay, so we're going into the into the future of movies. So the future. The future. future. Um, Jason Clark has been cast as John Connor in the new Terminator movie. Okay. Which the trailer just came out for. Which I watched briefly once. So once. Yeah. To me, it just looks like a remake. Kind of. It's like a well, we know it's a reboot. Because it Is it like soft reboot, like Days of Future Past, where it's like. Oh, yeah, it is totally a sequel, but also we're just going to fix some stuff. I think, yes, because it, what it's a time it seems, travel movie. There's going to be inherent contradictions that you obvious, have to ignore, I guess. But I think it, like this movie's going off of that. Like, uh, the future past. No, it's, <clears throat> so it looks like a remake of the first one. Right. Kyle Reese is getting sent back to save Sarah Connor. Yeah. And, uh, but... You know, instead of in the first one when he gets there, you know, she has no idea that there is a war or anything like that. Yeah, she's just thrown into whatever. She's just thrown into it. In this one, from the trailer, she's pumped and ready to go, and she's like, oh, we already killed that first Terminator. He's like, what's going on? And in the trailer, she says, the past, you know, the, the time where that was happening doesn't exist. Now, blah, blah, blah. And I don't know how they're going to explain it at all. Yeah. I don't it's, it gives a reason to have another movie. But it, it will have another movie. Yeah. And, you know, maybe it'll be action packed. I mean, uh, the governor is back. I, I, I don't know how I feel about the return of Arnold Schwarzenegger to, like, acting. Because I'm pretty. I, I was just. I mentioned this to Dan the other day. I'm pretty sure the last movie he was in before he became governor was Terminator 3. If it wasn't the last one, it was one of the last ones. That he, I think it was Terminator 3. I think he had, like, a really tiny role in, like, that Jackie Chan movie, uh, 80 Days Around the World or something yeah, like But, like, that know, was, like, his last days. major... Oh, shit, that was fucking 100 years ago. It was, like, yeah, he's been the governor for a lot. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> um, anyway, so, like, when they made that movie, that I thought that was... I thought, naively, that uh, this is the last major time we're going to see Arnold Schwarzenegger in a movie. Probably do cameos or whatever in the future, but, like, this is his last, like, starring role. Boy, were we wrong with that. And now uh, he's in, like, every fucking movie... You know. I'm a okay with it because of love. Honestly, I don't. I, I think '80s action is just all. That's what you're about. Yeah. Is that correct? I mean, what's wrong with '80s action? I'm just pointing I, it out. I don't know. Like, like it's the same problem I have with Sylvester Stallone coming back. Same problem I have with the, them casting the original actors in Star Wars. It's like I don't want to see the same people again as old people in these same movies. Like. Once you, you reach a certain age, you can't play the same roles that you did when you were a young person. Clearly, like, they can't. But, I mean, <laughs> they I... They do what they want. I don't know. Yeah. It's, not, it's To me, it's not the same. And, like, I'm just constantly taken out of it. Because, like, okay, I'm going to watch this new Terminator movie. Why is he old? Why do we have old Arnold Schwarzenegger in the movie? Why don't we have young, awesome Arnold Schwarzenegger? Like, I don't understand. Like, it takes me out of the movie because it's like, you know, why can't they just cast a new Terminator? Why can't we hit pass the torch? We have to live in the past of... Um, we have to live in the shadow of what has come before. I don't know. Why do they have to keep making another Rocky movie? Because I guess that's a good idea. I don't know. Well, that was, you know, Stallone just wanted, I guess he wanted to do it. And, then, you know, it, the movie, If you, I mean, if you want to know why Stallone feels like he has to come back into the acting role, just watch Rocky Balboa because it's very, like, parallel I've never like seen him, it myself. Him going back into fighting in Rocky Balboa while being so old is extremely parallel to like him wanting to act again. Yeah. You know? 
But I'm not. I'm not saying old people can't be in movies. I'm just saying there's a certain. Get moment. out of the movies, old people. Like, 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 you're wrinkly. Like, like imagine like. Imagine I think the, I said this last week. Old people are gross. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like did. like imagine like Michael Caine or Morgan Freeman were like trying to be action stars. It's like no, they're like yeah. They, they why isn't like, Michael Caine James Bond again? You know, for, yeah. For the yeah, first time. Yeah. First yeah like why you know why isn't Sean Connery you know why does you know it's like in Indiana Jones uh, the Last Crusade like imagine. Obviously, I'm not saying that that Sean Connery was Indiana Jones, but Matt, like Sean Connery was James Bond, and like he was in like these awesome protagonist mo- roles right. in the past. Like, imagine if he just like shoved Harrison Ford aside, like I'm going to be the action star of this movie, even though you know, it make sense. yeah, it would make sense because he's 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 the yeah, older Harrison guy. Four is old too. But now, now he is, but not old. not in Indiana Jones, not in the third Indiana Jones movie. Indiana, oh, okay. in the Last Crusade, Indiana Jones is he carries all the weight. Not only is he, you know. Saving it, you know, he's saving himself, but he's also saving his dad. His dad. Yes, and, but I think I think you overestimate that. Like uh, this new Terminator movie has Amelia Clark, who is uh, Daenerys Targaryen. Yes, yeah. yeah. yes. Okay with that. I'm in love with her. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, Jai, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Jay Courtney is. Yeah, yeah. Jay, is that right? I guess. Um, and he's playing Kyle Reese, and he's like a new, like young action guy. He was in. Um, he's gonna be in Suicide Squad as Captain Boomerang. Yeah, he's gonna be in Suicide Squad. He was just he was in that movie Jack Reacher. He was a bad guy, and he was in. Come on, there's one more movie. I can't think of it. I can't. I can't just think put of it in that. My, my 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 whole point is like I, I can't I, think it's of good it. that they have those <laughs> those new like it wouldn't be feasible to have any of those characters be the original actors. That's right. not gonna happen, but. I'm saying the fact that Arnold Schwarzenegger is still there. He's the Terminator in the Terminator movie. He's still sort of like the reason you go see it. Right? Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, you don't go to see Terminator to see Sarah Connor like flop around. Like you go to see Terminator do awesome Terminator things. Wait, I'm sorry. Uh, have you seen any of the Terminator movies? Because she doesn't exactly flop around. But, but she's she's out of her league. She's you know she's always sort of in. On oh, the first one and the second one, she's kick ass. She knows what she's doing. I, I guess I don't know. She, again, there's still there's still same tropes of her like running away from. She's still not up to the task of fighting this new Terminator, the Liquid Terminator. I mean, it, it, even who would be up to the task I, it, of fighting the Liquid that's Terminator? That's what I'm saying. But I'm saying like they're the human characters. They're always vulnerable and they're the targets. Yeah. And they have the Terminator who is either the bad guy or also the good guy protecting. And like that's sort of the, the formula they set up. So. I'm not. I'm not detracting from like Sarah Connor's like awesome. Like in the second movie, she does a lot of cool things. But like they're the human characters who are vulnerable, and like I don't care about them as much as I care about like the awesome stuff that the Terminator does. Arnold Schwarzenegger in those movies is awesome and badass, and that's what I go yeah. to see them for. But like I'm not excited about going to see old Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, yeah, I, I, I don't know about you, and this could be different for everyone. I, it doesn't excite me. I, I get no excitement okay. out of going to see old Arnold Schwarzenegger try to recreate what was amazing in the past. I could just go watch Terminator 2 again. I'd be happy. Yeah. I would prefer... Yeah. I would prefer a human person playing Terminator as opposed to, like, all the infinite robots or whatever the fuck yeah, is in know. Salvation. I don't know. I didn't even see that movie, so I don't Well, know. in Salvation, they kind of... They did the thing where um, they made the T-800 uh, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, but it was, like... See, they like CG, like young Arnold Schwarzenegger face, and it was just like, I think they're doing that again in this movie too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but not for his role. Yeah, yeah. Which is even weirder. Cause it's even less. I don't. It, it, it makes, makes even, even less, less sense. sense. No, like, it's like makes, a no, Tron makes, legacy with the Jeff, like, the young Jeff Bridges. Why? Yeah, I, why makes, did he age? Why did he age? That I don't know why he aged. That's yeah. a question I have too. But it makes sense. That um, like you could have just ignore it and just have him be the only Terminator and just don't address it and yeah, like okay he's old not? like I get it like you know but no it makes sense make him look old because he's trying to blend in yeah I don't know it whatever. makes sense for the story that there would be other Arnold Schwarzenegger looking things because like when Skynet like mass produces these they all T eight like hundreds they all look like the perfect human which is Arnold Schwarzenegger of course well naturally it, no, no it would probably be Tom Cruise but the perfect <laughs> <laughs> killing he's a little know, short. Might hurt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, the perfect, like, badass, I guess, person is on. Can't, so can't speak English very well. <laughs> give me your, perfect. Give me your address there. The, the least conspicuous yeah. person in the world. Uh, okay. 
Terminator, I think we discussed that. Yeah, one last thing. Yeah, okay, we're, we're going long here. I want to talk about Spectre, the new... You know, oh, yes. The new James Bond movie. Sure, sure. And I mostly, I want to just talk about how they announced it. See, yeah, was, I, I don't know, because I, I heard it was coming out. That's all I heard, and I, I, there was some buzz around There's it. always the, oh, yeah, James Bond movie's coming out. Naturally, this is the twenty fourth James Bond movie, so it's just like yeah, at this point, obviously there's right, one. Right, the like works. when someone, I, I, sorry, I lost English there for a second, but I just always, <laughs> I just always assume there's a new James Bond movie coming out eventually. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, eventually, it's gotten to that point. They figured it out. You know, cast it's a new James Bond. It's like the Bond Doctor Who every... of movies. It's like you know, another one's gonna pretty come much, up. pretty much. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's okay. Cast a new guy. It yeah, doesn't yeah, matter. No one whatever, cares. Yeah. Um, Mike Fassbender. Please don't get me started. Okay. Uh, that'd be cool. That would be so good. Um, so yeah, the the way they announced it, they announced like everything relevant to the movie for any type of movie goer. You know, they have like the casual, just action fans. Like, oh, here's the name of the movie, and here's the car, and Daniel Craig. Yeah, that's all you really care about. Exactly. And then they went through, named the whole cast, which includes Christoph Waltz, which I'm so excited for, because I love him. He's and incredible. And uh, I think That's Dave awesome. Bautista is another just notable name. That, see, that was, I heard about that too. <clears throat> and like, him and Guardian is fine, and he's, isn't he also in Suicide Squad? Or is it? No. No. Tom Hardy? Tom Hardy is. Yeah. I saw something else with him. Whatever. Maybe know. it was this. But I remember thinking, like, okay, like, he did Guardians, and it's fine, but, like, him going into a James Bond movie, I'm, like... I'm interested. Yeah. Interested, yeah, but uh, it seems weird. Yeah. It does seem weird. We'll see, but I guess. Yeah. I, 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 I'm interested. Guardians has me, has piqued my interest in him. So, um, so uh, you're a big fan of the, the new, like, yeah. Daniel Craig James Bond I'm movie? I'm a really big fan of the new Daniel Craig movies uh quantum solace not that good but just like still a fun action movie yeah like i but casino like, royale and skyfall every t- every time like amazing. yeah skyfall i saw when i went i see, i've seen all of them up to this point and like skyfall was was probably the one that i was most like i i sort of had the the fullest conception of what was going on because i always feel very confused in these james bond movies like i'm i follow stories pretty well i just feel like they they can't they tend to get a bit convoluted at times they do they do and like you know like is it? They don't make it easy for you to follow necessarily what's happening yeah. or, or or understand why are we having this chase scene? Like I just know they have to have a chase scene because it's a James, it's Bond, James Bond movie. But like, there's no you know instigation of it or right, right. Really fully but that's sort why. of the that's like how this series has been for the most part. It's just it's it's less mindless than it has been in previous. It's more grounded. It's definitely better movie making, but. That's, that's what I don't like about the new James Bond it's series. It's mindless. Like, like the first, the first uh, one, Casino Royale. <clears throat> yeah, I was like super excited for, like, oh, new James Bond, here we go. And uh, you know, other James Bond movies are like, this bad guy's got an island with a uh, ray gun to make the sun explode, yeah. and this guy's got <laughs> missile. Si- like, there's always a missile silo. And then I saw <laughs> Casino Royale, and it was like, they're playing poker. The guy had a scar, though. You knew he, <laughs> he had a scar. He had a like, scar. Yeah, that's how you know he's the bad guy. But that, that is what that book was about. They played poker. I know. It's very intense. But, like, that's why I didn't didn't care for that movie. So I didn't see Clown Souls. I like Skyfall, but it's also, like, but way more grounded. That, like, the, that's, the climax of that movie is just, like, but that was the thing a lot of guns in the house. About Skyfall, that, that it was setting up, it, it was, like, going back it, it came full circle, like it, it was going back to the original James Bond movies with mm-hmm. M and Money Penny yeah, and Q yeah. and all that stuff. <clears throat> Spoilers. Money Penny shoots him. <laughs> it's, it's so funny. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> and he was okay. Yeah, he was yeah. fine. And so that then you have like the evil mastermind villain on an island in the middle of nowhere who yeah. just is evil. Right. Yeah. But that's why I liked Skyfall, because I was like, yeah, get right. back to and what I want. that's what this is going to be more yeah, of, and that's yeah, why I'm so excited, especially when you have Christoph Waltz, and he plays <gasps> the best villain. Christoph Waltz is going to be so good. Yeah. He's, I like any movie, he's just going to be so good. Oh, but th- then, going back to what I was saying before, they have, you know, the general stuff, here's the car, James Bond, mm-hmm. and then they, they uh-huh. went through the whole cast, and they even announced, like, the entire crew, like, the bigger names of the crew, mm-hmm. and it was just like, 
for people who are like cinephiles and stuff, it was like, oh, this is good. This is definitely going to be a good production, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's Sam Mendes again, yep. who did Skyfall, and American Beauty, which were my favorite movies ever. American Beauty is incredible. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And the same writers from Skyfall. So you know a lot of the same teams involved. So if you like, of, essentially a lot of the same crew from if, Skyfall. If you like Skyfall, you'll probably like this one. Yeah, and then this one, they have the uh, cinematographer who did Interstellar. Oh, really? Cool. So the last James Bond movie, Skyfall, got nominated for an Oscar for cinematography because it was fucking beautiful. And so this one should be just the same. Or better, maybe. Or better. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe James Bond going to outer space and it'll look amazing. Yeah. Gotta save my daughter <laughs> and the world <laughs> from corn and England. <laughs> yeah, England. Yeah, yeah. Like, That's all I wanted to talk about. Dude, okay, okay. We went we went excited. rather long, but maybe, maybe we'll make we're it. Be late maybe we make a two part release. Like we'll charge extra for it. It'll be great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it'll be one episode. Yeah, but then that first part is gonna be so boring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No one's gonna care about that. Yeah. It feels like a part one. Yeah. All right. Well, we that's should, it. We should, we should do a little we tribute. Do a little, little goodbye. Yeah. Because it's Chris's last episode. Yeah, he's graduating, leaving us for good. Moving on to bigger and better things. It's you may not have seen the last of me, <laughs> but no, probably you will. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess if you come back, we'll do one. Yeah. We'll, we'll edit you. Maybe, <laughs> maybe parade day or something. We'll have one. Yeah, I'll we'll just get wasted. I'll tell you. We'll be like, we'll be like <laughs> man, Steel's a great. <laughs> Oh, we'll we'll just CGI CGI you in yeah. a young Chris Pratt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Andy Serkis playing me. Yeah, <laughs> you know I think Man of Steel is a great film. <laughs> that was my Chris Pratt. <laughs> just, just the most animated possible. I really like that movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we'll, we'll we'll work on that. But you know, goodbye, Chris. Hey, it's been good. Hey, good time. It's been pleasure. Sir, I go with this game. <laughs> Uh, so uh, yeah have a happy new year and Christmas and uh, these two guys will uh, see you later bye everyone bye bye Scott <laughs> <laughs>